Okay, in today's video, I'm going to do something amazing. I'm going to show you two different ways to calculate your weight on Earth or the force of attraction, gravitational attraction, between you and the Earth. Here's you, and here's the Earth, this big green thing. Here's you. Look how happy you are. You have a mass of 75 kilograms. This is your mass. A lot of people say, how much do you weigh? Oh, more people ask you, how much do you weigh? Oh, I weigh 75 kilograms. That's not your weight. That's your mass. Weight is a force. Force is measured in newtons. We need to convert your 75 kilograms into newtons. And the most common way we do that, to figure out the weight of an object near the surface of a planet, in this case, Earth, is to use Newton's second law of force equals mass times acceleration. But when we calculate the weight, we often rewrite Newton's second law like this. Force, the force of gravity, is equal to the mass times g. What is G? G is the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. A is the general symbol for acceleration, all kinds of acceleration. G is a special kind of acceleration. It's the acceleration due to gravity. And the acceleration due to gravity, as most people know, is 9.81. That's the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth. Every place, every planet, every place above Earth has a different acceleration due to gravity. But since you're standing on Earth, we use G as 9.81. And we just simply multiply the mass, 75 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, 9.81. If you're standing on the moon, this would be a different value. It's 1.62. We're talking about your weight on Earth, and you find out that on Earth you weigh... 736 newtons. Now what that really means, that's your weight. That means you're applying a force of 736 newtons to the surface of the Earth. Well, the Earth is also applying that same force on your feet, equal magnitude but opposite in direction, because that is the force of attraction, your weight between two objects that have mass. So one way you can calculate your weight is with Newton's second law. The other way you can calculate your weight is with Newton's law of universal gravitation, which says that the force of attraction between two objects is equal to g, which is gravitational constant I'll talk about in just a second, g times the mass of one object, like the mass of the Earth, and because you're standing on the Earth, times the mass of the other object, which is u, 75 kilograms, divided by the square of the distance between them. So I'm just going to plug the values in. The force of gravity between two objects is equal to g. g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared kilogram squared. This is a constant. It's always 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And then we're going to multiply that by the mass of the two objects. Now you'll notice the units for the constant are in kilograms. The units for mass are in kilograms. So that's, therefore, the mass has to be in kilograms. The masses have to be in kilograms. And typically, they're given in kilograms. The mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And we gave your mass as 75 kilograms. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, we have to divide that by the square of the distance between them. Now, you might say to yourself, well, there is no distance between them because I'm standing on Earth and there's no distance between me and the Earth. Well, when we use Newton's law of universal gravitation, it's really the distance between the center of mass of the two objects. The center of mass is right in the center of Earth. And the distance between the center of mass or the center of Earth and you is really the radius of the Earth. And the radius of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers. Now, your center of mass is right here around your belly button, which is probably another meter away, but that wouldn't really add anything to the radius of the Earth, which is 6,371 kilometers. Okay? So that's the distance, really, in this case, for this equation, Newton's law of universal gravitation. That's the distance between you and Earth, the distance between the center of mass of the two objects. So we're going to put that in there as meters because it's given in kilometers, but the units on the constant are meters. We have to convert the kilometers into meters. That's 6.371 times 10 to the 6 meters, and we're going to square that. And when you do all that complicated-looking math, this value times this value times this value, divided by the square that's just between them, you get that the force of gravity, the gravitational attraction between those two objects, the Earth and you, is also, as we found out above here, 
very close to 736 newtons. Okay, this is two ways to calculate your weight, which is really the force of attraction between two objects. And we have to get the same answer in both cases because we have the same two objects, your weight on Earth and the force of attraction between you and the Earth. Okay, so there's two different ways we can do that. We can use Newton's second law, F equals ma, F equals mg in this case, when we calculate the weight, or we can use Newton's law of universal gravitation, which this is the equation we typically use to calculate the force of attraction between two objects that are separated by some distance, like the moon, and you know, like the earth and the moon. This is the equation we would use. This is the equation we use to calculate the force of attraction or the weight of an object that's near the surface of the Earth or near the surface of a planet when we know that G, in this case for the Earth, as we said, is 9.81 meters per second squared. If you were on the Moon, it would be your mass times 1.62. That's the acceleration due to gravity on the Moon. You have you weigh less on the Moon, but your mass is the same. Okay, but that's another story. Okay, so there you go. There's two, two separate ways to do that. These equations are equal to each other. We can set these equations equal to each other and do some other interesting things, which we'll do in the upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.